Welcome to the Township Whitewater Region Special Council Meeting for Wednesday, November 22nd. It is 4.46 p.m. and we're going to call ourselves to order. Our land acknowledgement. As we gather, we would like to acknowledge on behalf of Council and our community that we are meeting on the traditional territory of the Algonquin people. We would like to thank the Algonquin people and express our respect and support for their rich history. And we are extremely grateful for their many and continued displays of friendship. We also thank all the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years. Excellent. Next item on the agenda is the declaration of interest. Any members of council that need to declare any declarations? None? Okay, I see none. We'll move on. Item number three, and the purpose for a special meeting, is the 2024 draft budget. And the recommendation is that the Council of Township Whitewater Region receive the draft 2024 budget presentation and direct staff to move forward with the public meeting on December 6th, 2023 at 5.30 p.m. A mover and a seconder, please. Moved by Councillor Trim, seconded by the Deputy Mayor. And I am turning it over to the Treasurer. Perfect, Treasurer. Thank you, everyone. Uh, good evening. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for being here and, and welcome everybody for the second presentation for 2024 budget. And uh, we have a bunch of staff here too. Um, just a piece that at the end of each section, so I've broken the budget, uh, this presentation down into uh, non-tax ba non taxation based revenue will be looked at first, which is all our user fees. Uh, and at the end of each section, there's actually a piece for uh, council direction. So either there, if there's any amendments or changes to be done at that point in time, we can change it at that uh, at that piece. Same thing. There's a area for questions at the very end of each section. Uh, so first thing first is our budget schedule. So we're now on to the. November Sorry, I'm 20th. just going to interrupt for just one second, Treasurer. Yep. I just wanted to note because we didn't talk about quorum at the beginning of the meeting. Um, Councillor Tabert is on Zoom. And although not on one of our screens, she will be shortly. She is listening. And we have one absence right now, and that's Councillor Moore. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we're on to the November 22nd meeting today. Uh, the public meeting will happen on December 6th, as you've mentioned. And then with the hope that once that meeting has been completed, on December 20th is when we'll actually pass the, uh, the bylaw for the, the budget itself for adoption. So again, this is the, just a note for our mission and vision for the township, uh, which is what our guiding principles are towards this budget and, and every budget for what we uh, strive for here at the township. So what does 1% incre levy increase mean? So again, our last year's uh, full levy was $6.7 million. So the total increase for a 1% levy increase would be 67729 Um this is an, a slide we had in the last presentation as well. It just shows where we are in respect to uh, the county, uh, the city of Pembroke, and, uh, and Laurentia, every municipality uh, within the county itself. You can see we're kind of smack dab right in the middle based on our median assessment of 179,000. So even though there has been some changes since our last, uh, our last presentation, uh, we're still with the 1% levy increase uh, for operating, um, still with the same cost of living adjustment of 2.5% for salaries. Um, health benefits came back, uh, so there was a substantial increase in the health benefits projected for the new year. Uh, I'll speak to that a little later, but it was a 15.6% increase is what was proposed, which equates, equates to approximately $20,000 or a 0.28 increase. And we, uh, as staff, we're actually able to include that, look for more savings within uh, to, to keep that at the 1%. Um, inflation pressures, the 5.3% June to June. So those affect the overall. Uh, insurance has come back at 7.3%, at at which was what I originally had budgeted. Uh, and then our dementors, of course. So the capital. Uh, still sticking with the levy increase of 4.2%, uh, the funding sources, uh, OCIF, CCBF, and tax reserves and reserve funds. OCIF and CCBF have not been confirmed yet, uh, still waiting for confirmation on those. I've sent out requests on both, but haven't got anything back yet for, the, for those amounts from the, uh, from the province and from the federal government. 
So this is our uh, transfer to reserves. Um, nothing on this page has changed from the original budget presentation except for the ORPC. So that one has been moved from $18,000 down to $16,000 uh, after a review of what we've uh, received or are projected to receive for 2023. That's a more realistic number. Um, because by the time we've now got our third quarter of uh, interest from the Oro River Power Corp, so now there's only one left, and I, I know what that one's going to be, so that's why I was able to get to that uh, that figure. Any questions? Any questions from any member of council in the first section? Good. Perfect. Continue. Okay. And now we're on to non-taxation generated revenue. So those are our user fees. Um, no change on this slide from the original presentation. Uh, so this is our administration. So our, it's our tax and water certificates to go from $60 to $65. Uh, the one day rush, $75. And then the tax uh, account statement slash reprint of receipt, uh, a new charge of $5 where it wasn't and had no charge before. Um, the open air burning permit, it has been amended to show that it's an annual fee, not a per permit co uh, charge fee. Um, which is the way it was, always was, it just wasn't noted in the, in the actual presentation uh, for a charge of $10 and then uh, no change to the, any of the other uh, charges uh, from the last presentation. Um, building permit fees, this is to go from uh, the residential rate to the uh, proposed rate um, of 75 cents from 69 cents. So it's an increase of six cents on the residential permits. Um, again, no changes from our last, uh, the last presentation. And then this is the calculation again, just wanted to show, show council again how the new calculation of these rates was going to go. So right now it's based on the finished floor area, which is the main floor uh, plus a one quarter of the basement. So it would be, if it was a three story home, the, the second, first story and second story would be tack, would be build at 100% square footage, and the basement would have been one quarter of the actual square footage of the basement. What the 2024 proposed rate calculation is, is to be 100% on the entire footprint um, of each floor. So it'd be a 100% basement, 100% the first floor, and 100% the second floor on a three story, on a two story home. Um, and that, this is the actual calculation of what that would look like. So right now in 2023, the total building permit for a 1,000 square foot home with a second story uh, would have been 1202, or sorry, 2,202. And what it's proposed to be for 2024 is 2950, uh, which is where it's the full 3,000 square feet, which is the entire of all three floors times 0.75 cents, and then the gra a garage uh, that's on there of 70 cents a square foot at 1,000 feet. Uh, and you, as you can see, we're very comparable to Iron Pryor, Renfrew, and Petawawa. So this slide has just been re-put in there just to show it's, we still have the same uh, operating loss on the department. Um, but again, the re budgeted revenue is a educated guess to as far as we can because we, don't, we can't control the number of actual permits we're going to get. So we can calculate on these fees and, and this would be an a educated guess but we could technically have more, we could technically have yes, more, uh, less, but this is what the, it looks like at this point in time. Uh, under the transportation side, we have the uh, tile drain uh, crossing and the utility road crossing permits, each to go up by 150. Uh, the waste collection fee uh, to go from 164 to 168. Uh, this is the curbside collection where it's billed with your taxation. Uh, or your tax bills, I should say. The change to this uh, slide under landfill is the minimum charge. So originally, uh, we didn't have that included here, but whenever we went back and looked at the actual fee for the minimum charge, it didn't work out to the, what the new per ton rate was. Uh, so the idea was is to move it to $21 and base it on 200 kilograms and under is becomes our minimum charge. Originally, it was 210 kilograms, but whenever you do the calculation on that, it comes out to be about 2160. And in order to keep it to round numbers and to keep it going forward as an easy calculation, uh, 200 kilograms and under is, is the easiest uh, way of doing it to keep everything um, clean. 
So where we've said, where we've recommended is to note that anything 200 kilograms and under going forward is what the base rate will be calculated on. It gives clarity to the public too, to know if they have under that 200, what they're to expect. If they have over that, then they're gonna get billed at the per ton rate, which again is an increment above that $20. Um, these are the uh, proposed rate increases for uh, ice and ball diamond rentals uh, under the recreation side. They've all been adjusted to be uh, the CPI of 5.4%, which is the June to June average. Um, then under planning, the 2023, uh, a, no, a small change has been made to this slide just to show that it's the former costs that were sent to the county. So it used to be that whenever the severance was done, we had a, ch a charge and then we would pr send that on to the county for delegation or uh, to have them actually perform the severance. So we're removing that fee, but we're adding a severance cancellation fee of $200 so that whenever, if somebody decides that they don't want to continue with a severance, we then would charge them the $200 to cover some of the, lo some of the work that has been completed. Uh, any questions? Excellent, uh, we'll start with Councillor Bell. Just a question on the building fee calculations. So uh, we're looking at um, adding that the full, full footprint of the basement. Is that to be understood as that basement is a full height, uh, possibly like can be used as living space moving forward at some point. So i.e., let's say there's a crawl space. Are we charging, like are the building fees going up or are we be charging for the full footprint of a, of a crawl space or is it, does it have to be meet a certain a minimum height it's accepted that it can be living space, et cetera? I'll defer that question off to the building. This yes, so I think if it's a crawl space, we won't be charging if it's not livable. Um, but anything livable over five foot ten, uh, then we would be charging. We're going to have to change our bylaw, our building bylaw, to to explain that and that. Uh, but uh, if it's a crawl space, you just usually have your mechanical stuff in there. There's nobody living there, so it's not a big issue. Good. And Councillor Tram, you had a question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to the treasurer. Slide eighteen. Um, I'm just wondering what this increase represents. Uh, uh, wh why are we, how are we justifying this? Is it uh, labor? Is it equipment? Is it like, uh, w what's the reason for this increase? Do you want to take that Sure. <coughs> yeah, so it's more than just the, the actual labor. Um, these prices have, haven't gone up in a, in a, in a long time. Um, it's basically, it's just a staff time to go actually meet with residents uh, for example, if, it, if it's a Tyler, uh, Tyler Drain crossing, um, and also if it's a, if it's meeting with the um, um, utilities, so it basically is time. Thank you. I have two more, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Please continue. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, slide 19, please. Uh, again, is this increase due to uh, contract, our contract, or? That's correct. So our contract has actually gone up that this amount uh, leaves us perfectly in line as, in, as of last year uh, for the increase in the contract, which le and it leaves the same amount going to reserves as prior years. Okay. And finally, uh, on this section, um, slide 20, uh, contaminated soil. Is that per metric ton? That is correct. Thank you. Yep. That'd be all, Mr. Mayor. Any other questions? Excellent, okay. Treasurer, can you please carry on? Okay. So the next slide is for council direction. So I'm looking uh, for either the acceptance of the user fees as presented, or if there are any amendments that uh, the council would like to, would propose that be adjusted, and then I'll list amendments from that. What to bring forward to the public meeting. Is there any suggestions or any amendments proposed by members of council with respect to what you've seen in this section of the presentation? Yeah, Councillor Bell. So just going back to what I mentioned before with that uh, user fee increase with the, uh, for the building calculations, if we have to amend the building bylaw for that, I, I'd like to see that be um, 
appropriate measurements for a living height, whether that's whether that's a seven foot ceiling or an eight foot ceiling. I don't think it's fair to charge the same amount uh, for permit fees for a space that you're not necessarily going to be utilizing to live in. So uh, from my perspective, I'd, I'd like to see that just be specified as to what we um, what we're including in that in that increase for basements. We can amend the presentation to reflect those comments mm -hmm. and and just make a note in our to do list to come back. Should this get passed in December, the automatic is the and I lost the name that the bylaw for building. Is that what it's cost? Yeah, we need the building bylaw. Building bylaw. Okay, just so we don't lose track of that. Good. Any other amendments that are proposed with respect to the section that was just presented? Good, none seen, so it stands. Thanks. Perfect. Next section, please, Curtis. All right, so now we're on to the general operating adjustments. So these are changes that have happened since our last presentation uh, on November 1st. The first impact is salary and wages. So the impact here has been health benefit renewal. Uh, so our current provider has come back with a proposal of an increase of 15.6%. That equates to nearly $20,000 of an increase over our premium last year. Um, originally, whenever this was presented, there was a very small increase, like only a 2% increase uh, expected, um, more reasonable to what usually has been. So what has happened is that caused a 0.28% or sorry, a 0.29% uh, levy increase. Whenever that happened, we did a quick review of and a thorough review of uh, all line items to try and find savings. And we were able to actually bring that back down to the 1%. But it's just a, as a, a note that we've seen another pressure of 15.6%. Um, this por portion was, uh, I'm currently going through the process of trying to find, send it to market in order to find savings. Um, the process is not a instantaneous one to go through. Uh, it takes quite a bit of time to, to process that piece through. Um, so the way it's kind of been set up is that we're budgeting the, the full 15.6% increase in the budget. And then if we can find savings and change providers come next year, we'll do that midway through next year, hopefully early next year, so that that overall impact, that 15.6% won't actually hit us. Because um, in early talks, I've talked with a few uh, brokers about the savings are actually substantial that they're talking to me about, but they haven't gone through to actually send it to market, so I can't provide exact numbers, but it does sound like there is savings available to us. Um, so the, the big things that were hit was there was a $15,000 that we were able to slim off of the roads budget, and then 3500 that came from economic development, which is advertising. We had put a little bit of money aside on top of the red uh, grant funding, that needed to be our allocation. So we just kind of took a little bit away from the, the other advertising that economic development was going to do uh, to bring that down to $1,500. So it took $3,500 from there. The overall has not changed uh, from the last presentation of the same, same number of full-time equivalents, uh, casuals, and students. So this is what our new salaries uh, look like under the general. Uh, you can see that the uh, the bigger increases are the landfill and the parks, but the parks is more to do with a reallocation from the arenas side, and the the landfill is to do with the uh, proposed addition of one a new landfill attendant, uh, which I'll speak to that uh, very shortly. Uh, this is the water and wastewater. Uh, very little change. The overall increase was three hundred thirty dollars uh, overall. There was a question uh, on the last presentation about what the 4S program was, uh, which was looking towards our WSIB uh, excellence program and saving savings for uh, our WSIB premiums. So the staff are proposing that the township uh, contract 4S consulting services to assist with the completion of that program. Um, through the completion of each element of the program, there's 32 elements, uh, the township will receive credits of $1,000 per program. Once that 
money has been received, it actually carries on forward into future years, so it lowers our overall premiums. Uh, it'll, uh, the program itself is not a requirement uh, in order to actually enroll in the, 4S, or in the uh, WSIB Excellence Program. We are actually already enlisted in that program, um, but it's an assistance to move forward in it. At this point in time, from my review of it, we, are, we have done all the basic level equivalents, the basic elements, but there's more advanced elements that have to be completed in order to get to that full amount of uh, refund that we can get. And this program will allow us to get there uh, in a more expedited timeline. And it'll also go forward where whenever employees, we need to track training, we need to do training, it'll avoid, uh, allow us to do that without having to out outsource or bring in other consultants. It'll be something we're already paying for so that it'll track their training each person will have a login that they'll actually be able to track their training themselves and will be able and incident forms and all that type of stuff will be in one portal there is a lot of benefits to the program going forward because it keeps us up to date in what what safety uh health and safety qualifications we need to keep up to date on because it'll automatically remind people hey your thing expires in such many days please renew and and those type of things um and then the other side to the program is once the uh, the program I think is what our per memory is was about sixteen thousand dollars a year. We'll expect to receive, re return back about eleven thousand dollars a year as we do the WSIB credits. So the I've budgeted both sides for this year. So the overall impact is actually only five thousand dollars of the actual program, and that'll actually go down to I believe three thousand dollars once we are no longer need them to help complete the WSIB Excellence Program, and we just switch over just to their uh, regular uh, consulting service. Any questions? Questions from Council, Councillor Olmsted. Yeah, thanks, Curtis. Um, so just to clarify. For the um, WSIB Excellence Program, um, so the consulting fees are sixteen thousand dollars a year with a payback of eleven, and that'd be eleven thousand we're expecting year over year over year ongoing. Yeah, that's right. In in and fees. it's actually so eleven is only predicated on the fact that we do ten credits. So there's a enrolling benefit of getting an extra thousands, but if we do ten of the program requirements, we get ten thousand dollars. So if we really work hard and get 15,000, we could have a net benefit of the program doesn't cost us anything in a year, which is what I'm more gonna strive for, but I was just using the 10 because that's the recommended one way that they, they schedule it as it normally takes that long in order to, to complete the business. And sorry if I may, so an ongoing, it'd be $3,000 a year fee from the consulting firm with a payback of whatever it is, 10 or $15,000 a year. So the payback will be more in the way of, we'll just have reduced WSIB costs. Right. So the, those costs will go down going forward. And then the $3,000 is we're actually looking to remove a program that we are currently uh, purchasing that is just $1,800 a year. So the actual impact of that one is only $1,200 of more, but we get so much more benefit out of it. Great, thank you. Good, thank you. And any other questions, Deputy Mayor? Uh, thank you very much, Mayor. So just one quick question is, if we end up with a WSIB claim, or a couple of claims, does what does that do to this program? So that, as a, as a um, category within the municipality, uh, within their guidelines of the, um, the operations of the municipality themselves, it won't do anything to that side. And actually this program will help us to show that we had the, to avoid our rates going higher, we'd say we had all these things in place and we are completing this excellence member program to its full, and we're keeping up to date with it because it can show that this program, we're, we're keeping up to date because it's tracking all that. It uh, doesn't come to the back to the point where we're lacking in anything and, and then our rate's gonna increase due to the, that lack. Thank you. Thank you. I see Councillor Tabbert, you've got your hand up. Yes, um, how much more work will this put on to our employees? So the actual impacts to uh, employees will be uh, minimal in the fact that we actually have an employee who is payroll and health and safety. Um, uh, her job right now is to go through all the safety bit pieces of it. This will actually expedite that piece and, and make it easier, but enable them to uh, 
uh, have a more fulsome uh, and get to the, the, a full update of everyone's employees in a much more speedy manner. Thank you. Good. Any other questions? Councillor Trim. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to uh, Treasurer. I, I may have missed this, uh, but just further to what Councillor Olmstead was questioning about, what is the maximum uh, savings we can make? <coughs> like, that they suggest that you could do um, uh, 10,000 in one year. We may do a little more. Uh, over how, whatever time, how much is the maximum? I know that over time is going to be $3,000 a fee, mm -hmm. but what can we save maximally in the uh, WSIB premium? Sure. So there's there's 32 programs, thousand dollars each. So 32 grant, thirty-two thousand dollars. However, we've have completed, I believe, six uh, credits already. So it won't be the full thirty-two thousand from what we're already budgeting. But there will it'll always be a substantial decrease over what we are actually paying in premiums every year to the WSIB. Uh, thank you very much. Any other questions? Good. I just have two. Uh, the first one goes back to your comments, Treasurer, on the health benefits. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that, given the time constraints, we can't renegotiate that before we confirm the budget. So I think your approach is prudent. Can you confirm the current health benefit contract? What duration is it right now? So it's January 1 to January 1. But is it a three-year contract? So it's renewed just every year. We've been, from what... From what I can see from the actual program, it looks like we've been in this program since 2006. When I spoke to most uh, brokers and other uh, firms that deal in this area, they said that most want to go to market at least every five years just to kind of relook at our rates. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think our rates may be accelerated in height or in, in amount because they We've just kind of accepted the increase every year and, yeah. and haven't gone to that, maybe that step. Perfect. So we're going from a year-to-year -year option to an actual go out and tender for cheaper options. So the piece is we don't actually tender. Uh, the insurance network is, is a complicated side, and I was not aware of this either until I spoke to some of the, the uh, consultants. <coughs> they actually, um, you have to pick a uh, broker, that you want to deal with, and that broker will go out to the five bigger, the, the main firms. The, once one broker has gone out for you, another broker can't go and do it because the, the individual insurance companies will not fight each other or try to tell the other insurance mm -hmm. company that they get a smaller, a little more discount than another one does. So once they've gone to tender or they've gone out to look for a quote for us, we're, we're stuck with that one broker. So what we have to do is we have to pick our broker and they go to they go to market and that's the one we have to stick. We pick one of the choices that they have. Uh, I've also been told that as our current provider has already gone to market with the, the broker we currently have, that current uh, provider will not decrease anything compared to what they are because they don't want to show that there was any savings to be yeah. had. So that one is stuck. So we would be forced to change providers uh, just for that aspect. Uh, but it's been recommended by a lot that in the last few years since the start of COVID, insurance companies and health benefits now really want you to go to market. And a lot of municipalities actually started doing it yearly um, just to look for, just to kind of make their, their company, their, their provider on notice that we're looking to always move. We're not stuck with just one. Good. I think that's a, I think that's a good approach, especially if it is basically year to year. But okay, I'll be interested to see what happens in March. Uh, the second question or the note that I'd like to make is just the, the WSIB, I'm, I'm intrigued. We're essentially motivating ourselves by looking for that savings to increase our WSIB compliance with training, which is, which is great. I just want to make sure that we have the internal mechanisms to track it from a cost benefit perspective. Did like next year at this point, if we, if we go with all of these proposals, how did we progress? Right? Did we save the $26,000 that you said was available to save? Or was it really only 22? Or was it three? Mm -hmm. And why? That, as long as we have a mechanism in place, I think it's, a, it's an opportunity. I just want to make sure that we track it. 
so I can answer that. I mean, right now, if you look at the operating budget, I have uh, included the cost of the 4S program under admin uh, health and safety, and then under the miscellaneous income line under the revenue, I have added in $11,000 to come back from them. So it's already been allocated in the fact that we will receive that money back. So whenever I come back to this point in time next year, I'll be able to present we've completed so many and that revenue is tracked. Okay. Um, the other side to it is that um, if we go over that and ever have more program, are able to complete more programs, then of course that revenue item item will be higher in that side as well. We can also expect to um, save in other human resources side expenses in the fact that they are able to provide some of the consulting services we now already pay for externally. We already be, would already be paying for some of those things and not have to re-outsource them again. We'd be able to have the same company deal with them under the same cost umbrella. Perfect, I like the approach. Okay, Councillor Trim, that triggered something? Uh, yes, I, uh, back to the uh, benefits package. Um, just so that I have this straight, uh, we're going to go to market and then choose somebody, and then whoever we choose will have a year-to-year -year contract, and then perhaps after five years or so, we'll go to market again. But it'll continue to be renewed on a yearly basis, right? So there's actually, it's not as uh, regimented as, as I, I thought it was similar that way too. It's actually said that every insurance company has a little different time frame, but our current one, all they need is 60 days and we can get out of the contract. We can tell them we're leaving in 60 days, pick somebody new and move anywhere time throughout the year. So we're not regimented in locked in with this January to January term. That's just their set, their set renewal time. So we can actually jump, like move from them at any point in time that we want it. So, and the, the five year piece is from what I was, from what the, I was uh, instructed by some of the brokers was that if you go year after year, it just kind of makes them more competitive to keep your business. And because you would then provide them back. I've gone to market and, say, and I've say, I have this rate and this rate and this rate lower than your rate. What can you do? And then see if they'll come back to, to meet that rate. So we don't have to move providers every time we go to market. That is the one complicated part is when you move providers, there's a lot of administration time and work that's involved in that. Um, most of the brokers that I've spoken to so far though have offered to do that for us. I'm not sure what to level they can do it for us for further administration, but I've had them offer to actually come in and train everybody on them and, and a lot of different steps. So, I mean, there's a lot of different sales pitches for those types of things. I would, not, I would caution against moving all the time to different providers just to for ease, but whatever can save the township money, I think is the best approach in this fact. Excellent. There's no other questions. Treasurer, we'll move on to the next section. Thank you. <laughs> so the next section is environmental services. Uh, so this is our, under the waste and recycling, there's been no changes. So it's only under the landfill piece that there is a change. Um, and that's due to the uh, staffing complement of one uh, full-time operator. Uh, per that landfill uh, information presentation that was occurred on November 15th, a council meeting. I actually have a um, short piece as to the reason that that was recommended. Uh, it, this is an excerpt out of, and I believe everyone at the table also has a summary of the, uh, the landfill presentation. Uh, so the additional landfill and op facilities operator positions be re re recommended um, be for re the regulatory requirement to cover six days per week, uh, an increase in site traffic due to the closure of the Auto Valley Race Recovery Center to Whitewater residents, um, the increased workload associated with the operation of scales, requirement to provide sufficient staff coverage for breaks, sick days, and annual leave allotments, and then the requirement for sufficient man hours uh, to cover waste following public openings. So this, the, the big change here is that in this budget, we're actually changing the FTE of the landfill and of the overall municipality to add that one position. Any questions with that piece? Good. I know we received quite a detailed brief from Superintendent Nicholson last regular council meeting on this one. 
But is there any questions from any members of council on that proposal? Done. Good. Clear. Okay. So then I come to the uh, it's council direction. Is there any? Uh, do we accept that proposed staffing level as presented and bring forward to the public meeting? Or is this a refusal uh, to, to add that staffing level, uh, in which case the, the funds would be directed to the landfill reserve and, and uh, bring that forward to the public meeting? Good. Is there anyone that would like to make an amendment to what was been proposed by the Treasurer on the Environmental Services section of the presentation? Seeing none, we're good. Let's move on to the next section. Perfect. <clears throat> Recreational and cultural services. So there was a, um, a slight change here uh, due to the health benefits piece. Um, that is the only really impact to this change. It, it uh, changed the overall decrease from uh, by $1,500 uh of the loss of the decrease from prior year so the way it is budgeted now by staff is that Cob cobden would be operational with a nice facility for the 2024-2025 season uh, westmeath would be only operational for half of the season which is the other half of the current season it's in which is the 2023-2024 season and then beachburg would have no ice operations uh, as it was funded already uh, and is being operated by the Big Rec Association for the remainder of the 2023-2024 season. Any questions? Good. Questions from members of council? Councillor Moore. Just curious what would happen in, and if uh, Beachburg Rec decided not to run next year, what would happen then if we're not putting anything in the budget? So, so the 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 proposed so the if you just go back a couple slides if you don't mind uh, treasurer so this 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 operating expense includes the facility so uh, should uh, should um, you know we're, we're going to engage with with the the associations but in the case of your example where Beechburg chooses not to operate ice out of that facility next uh, next next ice season. Uh, this budget includes keeping the lights on and uh, and maintaining that facility for the year. So if there's other activities, then we would be able to accommodate them like pickleball. Um, but uh, but in this case, the proposal is that the township would not operate ice the the the, the Beachburg Arena for ice as an ice facility. Um, Generally speaking, council moved a motion back in September to uh, examine the, re, re, the the adaptive reuse of our of our of our arena facilities. So uh, that's still ongoing, and we we we're looking at that. We're in the process of, of engaging a manager of of community service. So um, you know, as part of the budget, I've discussed with Councillor Bell a bit uh, earlier today, and we need to sort of engage with our associations again as part of this process, the budget process. Uh, and we're looking to probably do that in the next week or so, but uh, as it pertains to the proposed decisions before council. But uh, yeah, so this keeps the buildings buildings open. They 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 have lights on. They 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 have heat where they need to have heat, and they have the running water where necessary. Uh, but the proposal before council is that we would operate one ice uh, one ice operation uh, for the next season. Thanks. Thank you. It's good. Other questions, Councillor Trim. Uh, what? Uh, have staff been thinking about or uh, would be proposing to council to do with the um, the closed or mothballed ice plants should should the volunteers decide not to take Take them over. Uh, I, I mean, I would only think that uh, in any case where there's uh, where there's equipment that is deemed surplus to our needs, we would likely uh, look to, uh, to to I guess you say I say sell it. Maybe that's not the right right term, but we'd look to uh, deem it surplus to our needs and potentially sell it uh, through through the government deals. I'm not sure if there'd be a delay in doing that uh, if uh, if if maybe not next season or the following season, but I think we should move to. 
uh, yeah, we'd likely, if we deem it surplus, as, as the case would be, we're not operating facilities out of there, and neither, neither are the associations. We would we would move to probably deem them surplus and, and sell any components that we that we can. Thanks. Good, and I'll just uh, highlight one point: is that in September, when we made the decision about the ice facilities for the current ice operation year, we did talk about that envisioning and looking forward. What's going to be our plan? to work with the rec associations and the communities as to what the purpose will be for those facilities. That, initiating that plan and developing that plan forward, that's currently in our budget for next year? That's correct. Yes. Perfect. And our new manager of community services would facilitate that. Yeah, that's correct. So I think I'd anticipate that, that uh, you know, with successful recruitment, uh, we would likely have somebody in place in early, early, early January, uh, if not late December. Um, and yes, I mean, they would lead that. I would suspect that uh, we're, we're gonna try to engage with the Dillon uh, uh, consulting firm who had identified this adaptive reuse uh, proposal and the phases that they outlined in the operational review from 2021. Uh, we'd certainly engage with them to see Perhaps what would it cost to for the, to engage them to, to go through that process? What that does is it doesn't put all the onus on a brand new employee in our community, but it also puts the onus on an unbiased consulting firm uh, who's not a resident uh, or what may it be. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, I think yeah. So we're we're prepared to do that, and we need to do that sooner than later. And I and I, I recognize that. So yes, we're we're looking to move forward with that. Perfect. Thanks for that clarification. I'm just going to go to Councillor Tabert. I'll come back to Councillor Trim. We aren't granting money to any of the rec associations, even if they need funds to help with non-ICE programming. Do we have that in our budget that we can maybe help them that way? We have, uh, we, we are, the, the proposal is to maintain the community recreation grants that we have currently. And currently it's at $10,000, which is the same amount for this past year. So uh, we we would continue that program. Yes, uh, Councillor Tabbert. Thank you. Good. Is there any other questions before we go back to Councillor Trim for a second? Okay, Councillor Trim. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I would like to share with Council uh, some of the comments and questions I've been getting. And I, I want to share that with you because I think that uh, when we engage with the communities again, we should be prepared to answer these questions. And th th there could be very good answers. So I just want you to know that the questions out in the community are that the, the people are beginning to understand the budget constraints. And everybody pays taxes. They don't want to be paying more taxes. Um, and that is true. Uh, how, and they recognize that, okay, um, in 2017, the, uh, the council then decided that they would take on the operation of three rinks. And now council is deciding that we're going to cease ice operations in two rinks. And so community members are saying to me, and maybe to you too, that well, we can tell you how to save even more money, and that is to have Cobden run by volunteers too. And so this is a legitimate concern and a legitimate question. And I'm thinking that we should be prepared when we meet with the community members to have good answers to that, um, because that's the feeling that's in the community. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good. Thank you very much, Councillor Trim. And uh, that's a good point. And I know we're going to plan engagement with the communities coming and with the users. Uh, and I just want to make sure we come back clear to one point, and that is that both Westmeath and Beechburg, in terms of the facilities in this current budget before us, ensures that the doors are open and the lights are on. Those facilities could be used for any purpose because we're going to make sure that we keep them open just means we won't be producing ice in them but it would give the community rec association the opportunity 
to use that facility in whatever way it chose or work with us to find another way to use that facility. Did I summarize that correctly, CAO? Yeah, I think that's, that's well summarized, yes. Okay. Excellent. And recognizing that we're here to support the associations in determining on what that change is, right? So uh, we do have, uh, you know, part, uh, recreation strategic plans that were developed. There was some pretty intensive surveying that was done, if I recall correctly. So um, certainly we should lean on those documents and, uh, you know, I didn't fully review it myself, but that, that's probably something I have to do moving forward. But yeah, certainly uh, we're here to support the associations as we move with this change. So yeah, thanks. Okay, if there's no other questions, uh, we'll move on to your next slide. And I'll premise this with, is there anyone who wants to make amendment to what is proposed <coughs> in this section on recreation and cultural services? Councillor Trim. I, again, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I don't want to make an amendment. I just want to be sure that the community engagement will happen before we finally vote on um, uh, the 2024 budget. Is that possible? Uh, so I, I would, uh, and I was just thinking about this as we were on this slide was, I would request direction from council on what that engagement looks like and just get direction that we direct the CAO and perhaps Councillor Bell as the lead to engage with who are we engaging with specifically? Because uh, it, it could be pretty broad. Is it the whole public or is it uh, on this one item or is it only the user groups? And what is the intended outcome? Are we, are we looking to inform them? Are we looking to, um, you know, there, there's a whole series of spectrum of engagement. So is it to inform them of the decision before council so that they could advocate something different? Or, But I guess the first piece is direction to uh, to direct the CAO and perhaps Councillor Bell to engage with one, the, the associations, i.e. The, 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 the WDRA and the Beachburg Rec uh, and others if you wish. Um, and then the user groups being our local user groups, so that's not broad as in any user group. Um, so if I could just, through you, the Mayor, uh, try to seek out that direction uh, from members of Council. Thanks, CAO, and that's good clarification. Councillor Trim, did you have a proposal for the scope of that engagement? I didn't exactly because I, I haven't thought of it, the, the, the rec associations for sure, but the thing I don't want to leave people with a bad taste in their mouth, uh, we're going there and we have approved a budget. They're going to say, well, why are you here? You've already made a decision. So uh, I don't see much room in us changing. However, I haven't heard from the public yet. And so uh, I, I, that's why I would like to uh, have the public engagement with at least uh, the, the um, rec associations uh, and, um, uh, and b before, before we finally pass the budget. <coughs> if that's possible. Thank you. Perfect, so um, could that direction be that uh, we ask the CAO and Councillor Bell as the lead council member for Council on Recreation to speak with the two rec associations, Beachburg and Westmeath, to inform them of the contents of what council has agreed to to this point for uh, in terms of the uh, public presentation on the 6th. Um, and I see a nod from Councillor Trim. Mm -hmm. Councillor Bell, do you have some input to that? Yeah, I think just further to what uh, CEO Burton mentioned is um, maybe look at our top user groups from the 2023-2024 season. Um, we know who has the majority of the bookings, so whether that's our top three or top five user groups, um, just to inform them as to uh, what, the, what the potential operations are going to look like uh, for this for the next coming season um, I think that advocacy piece that he mentioned is probably good to hear from them uh, to tell us how what are what the challenges may be moving forward uh, with this decision so um, I'd like to include 
at least the top three, probably the top five user groups of uh, Cobden, Westmeath, um, from the township's perspective this year. So that would be including Muskrat Minor Hockey for one, and uh, probably a couple of the other minor hockey associations that are using the uh, the rinks. Is that possible to have done before the 20th of December? I'd say likely before the 20th, probably not before the public meeting, but which is two weeks away. But yeah, I think it's it's probably achievable by the 20th. Yes. Perfect. So can we amend that council direction then? Uh, <coughs> to include a second sentence under paragraph one to essentially say CAO Councillor Bell um, to inform the two rec associations and three to five user groups of the information that council has agreed to have presented at the public meeting yep uh, I'll make that amendment perfect is now that that amendment's been Discussed, is there any other input or comments from other members of council? Councillor Olmsted. I'm sorry, can you just read that back to me? I'm trying to get my head wrapped around the, sorry, the motion. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it was to direct CAO and Councillor Bell to inform the uh, recreation and user groups uh, of the proposed changes of the 2024 budget. Right, and maybe, maybe we can add that. Um, well beforehand that the budget public meeting is on December 6th to inform them that yeah, yeah. perfect yeah, so in, in correspondence to the which will be in the next day or so um, to try to schedule a time I will inform them of the proposed uh, uh, budget meetings uh, uh, the public meeting for the budget meeting budget uh, one thing I would add is that uh, you know that communication we will also speak to them of what the plan for it is like hiring a mm -hmm. firm to look at the adaptive reuse we've hire we're looking to hire a manager there's you know there's steps that council has taken to enact change if you will uh, and support these associations so uh, certainly not just you know there, there's positives coming out of the decision of of tonight's uh, budget in the last in, in the last few months of council as well so that's great thanks perfect any other comments or questions with respect to that amended direction good seeing none we'll move on thank you treasurer perfect so this next slide is what the current budget looks like I have a total operating expenses of ten million four hundred eight thousand two hundred eighteen uh, operating revenue this revenue is our uh, based off our user fees uh, grants um, which is our oomph and uh, and and then uh, interest charges and administration revenue non-taxation revenue so the balance to be funded by taxation through the levy is six million five hundred forty two thousand and eighteen dollars and that equals a one percent increase over last year's total operating uh, so 2023 was the first year that operating and capital had been broke out, broken out. So you'll notice why this 2023 operating le levy is not what the total levy was last year of $6.7 million. So our next slide goes on to a la carte budget changes. Um, so these are items for council's uh, decision and uh, choice as to whether they want to add this to the current levy. Uh, everything has a allocated cost and an allocated effect to the levy. The intent of these is they're a direct increase to the levy or decrease uh, without uh, trying to fit them in. There is no, there's no room for these to fit into the levy as is. So this would be either an increase or a decrease to the levy uh, and potentially a level of service um, associated with it. So it comes to council's... Uh, deliberation on these items they I should note as well they've been kind of uh, listed in uh, order of kind of what staff view is mo more important down to uh, least important not just in a, a general hierarchy uh, the leaf and yard waste pickup has been added to here uh, which had been noted in the uh, prior presentation where it's the estimated nine dollars per user um, to add that on to uh, curbside collection pickup. So there's no actual effect on levy, uh, but it's the, the actual charge would go from 168 to, to add $9 to be, go to 177. 
So, so I guess what we're trying to, essentially what we've presented to council here is a list of potential other operating expenses that you might want to consider. And um, the reason why we may have, may have ordered them in this way is for example, dust control is that we've left the dust control amount from 2023 to 2024. Um, we recognize that we're going to do less dust control because the money didn't increase and the cost to do gut dust control has increased. So, um, you know, we, we've put them in this order, but certainly at the discretion of council, you could choose any, any or, but recognizing that uh, for us to try to reduce the current operating budget as presented at 1% uh, to include some of these, uh, there would be some other changes in, in levels of service. So these are sort of add-ons, if you will, and uh, glad to converse about any of them and uh, and uh, and answer any questions you may have. So, uh, over to you, the the mayor. Thanks. So the next slide, if you will, basically uh, request direction from council uh, to accept any of the a la carte items, um, and or whether or not uh, they choose to just progress to the public meeting without any of them as well. So, thanks. So just to be clear, the items on the a la carte, and yeah, you can flip back to the a la carte. The items on the a la carte. Are either items that you would have liked to increase had we not put a 1% constraint on the budget? That's or correct. items that you have received requests from the public to consider? Or requests from members of council? That's correct. So these are all the things that are out there that meet one of those three criteria. Staff have come back and looked at them, maybe not from most important to least important, but most operational impact. Mm. Uh, in terms of our levels of service uh, from top to bottom. So this is where we need input from members of council. Are there items on there that you would like to add or discuss in some more detail? And Councillor Bell, you're up first. So this is probably a question for, uh, for Manager of P Public Works. But, uh, number The line number four there to remove street sweeping uh, under transportation transportation services. Um, why was that included in there? Is it, do you see that as a um, as an access to what we we need to provide as far as the service? Is it something that can be removed? Is it an efficiency that we can we can see within that? Um, how is it, how important is it that we get the street sweeping done and where is it done exactly within the township? Yeah, thank you. Um, as <coughs> with uh, with the actual sweeping, it's done. Um, um, all of our, our um, hamlets and villages, um, and it's one of the it's one of the true uh, true complaints we actually receive every year. Um, typically, typically, we always start once the the snow is done for the year, and um, typically, like, we always wait. Two, two, three weeks, and typically we get uh, many phone calls by then. Um, my recommendation is, is it wouldn't be be removed, um, but there are the cost savings. Say, for example, if that was removed, anyone increased the uh, the the gravel budget, for example, um, be one option. But we definitely would would cause some complaints. Or you get complaints that the streets haven't been swept after two or three weeks after the snow is gone. That's, That's correct. correct yeah. understand. So just to be clear, you are trying to give us an option of where you could make room if we wanted to stay within 1% but add some items. And the lowest hanging fruit that you could suggest would be street sweeping. However, it's you know it's it's it is a it's an expected level of service by the community, so it comes with some impacts, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Good. Anything else, Councillor Bell? Or move on to the next one. Good, Councillor Tabert. Do we have one schedule already, or are we content with just using reasons, just using? Uh, we don't currently have one uh, a mobile event scheduled for 2024 uh, and we are still enrolled with uh, Renfrew for 2024 thank you I'm just going to get Superintendent Nicholson to amplify 
how many days do do we have access to the site in Renfrew? Is it two or three months? Is that what I remember? Yeah, it's generally the um, the first weekend after the May long weekend, or the first week, sorry, the first weekend in May to the last weekend in August. Um, and they're generally open about four days a week. I think it was around 500 plus hours that they would be available to the public. And what does that cost us? Um, we haven't seen the bill for the year yet. Uh, my experience in previous years, it's about $10,000. So ten thousand dollars for May to the end of August, and this thirty thousand. What do we say? Thirty thousand gets us four hours, one day. Yeah. So it, it, just to compare those two different options for the community. Any other questions, Councillor Trim? Uh, yes. Uh, what we're attempting to do here is to keep our operating budget at 1%. Now, we all know that that certainly isn't sustainable over time. And uh, I know this is a, hopefully a one year off. However, we can clearly see that we're going to be reducing services to our community. Now, um, CAO Ivan has it, it talked about uh, one aspect of dust control that we haven't increased the budget but the cost is going to go up but there's another serious consequence too we're turning three roads to gravel and when we engage with the public on those roads and give them that news and then tell them that likely we won't have enough dust control to to keep to, to provide a good a good driving surface for them. Uh, that's uh, I, 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 that's just not acceptable uh, in my mind. And um, so uh, we can't we we can't reduce services in two ways at once. Um, if we're going to, if we need to, uh, turn roads back to gravel. We need to provide a proper driving service for the people who use them. And th that comes with dust control and grading, of course. And so I I'm having a difficult time with this one. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Trim, I'm going to corner you. Are you suggesting that we add gravel and dust control to our 1%? I'm, I'm suggesting we do that if the um, Public Works Department can't find another reasonable alternative, like perhaps uh, painting less lines or something else that I could live with. Um, uh, th th this is going to be a hard sell for the, the people on the affected roads. And so one or the other, yes is my answer. Perfect. And just to note, uh, the gravel increase is 0.89% and 0.29% for the dust control. Is that great? I'm squinting to see the... Yeah, so it's, it's an increase for the, the gravel increase is for the gravel roads program to do more roads, uh, to do more length of roads. So it equates to about 2.75 kilometers of road. Uh, so the gravel road gravel increase does not actually affect the roads that are proposed in the capital program. Those roads will already get gravel. That's part of the, the actual cost that's been put, proposed in the capital. So that's a separate piece. The, the dust control increase is to uh, be able to do, uh, I think it's 100% of the gravel roads. Uh, that is what that increase is for because we've slowly gone down from doing all of our gravel roads uh, to, I believe, 75% would be a rough number. Look to the patent manager. Yeah, I believe about 80, 80 some percent. Yeah. So that, that increase would take up that last 20% and then go forward on those new gravel roads. Uh, I've talked to the manager of public works and there's an, kind of an, enough money in the capital budget to have those roads calcium in the year they're done, like that they're turned to gravel. So we'd actually be looking at that in 2025's budget to have dust control for it to continue to cover those roads should they stay gravel. Okay.
Good. So I'm, I'm going to just corner because we're going to have to get some fidelity to this discussion. Uh, based on that last discussion, are you making the proposal for dust control increase at this point in time? Uh, based on that explanation, uh, uh, okay. But uh, this just isn't sustainable. I think hopefully everybody realizes that. And uh, yes, I'm, I'm okay. So you, you're not looking to have that increased? Okay, understood. Next question. Councillor Olmsted. Yeah, more of a statement, <clears throat> if I may. Um, in nine years, I don't think I've sat here and looked at a 1% levy increase for operating. I think it's time we finally get there. Um, I, I'm very content at not moving forward with any of the a la carte items. Um, I think we're looking at the taxpayers paying lots of increased user fees as we just went through. Uh, the elephant in the room that we haven't got to with water and wastewater, uh, which is, is going to be coming. Uh, I think now is the time to be very physically restrained. Um, I think taxpayers have been hit over the head the last few years. We're not going to come into next year with a lot of billing activity, which we know uh, you and I talked about what that represents to the bottom line. Um, that bottom line is going to start decreasing because uh, that, that base is going to fall off a little bit in terms of um, um, contributions to, to in levy increases. Well, we've, the last three or four years, we've had great years and we've offset a lot of our levy increases with activity. That activity is going to slow up as we saw the building activity is going to fall off by at least a third next year. So I, I think, as Councillor um, uh, Trim has said, you know, hopefully it's a one-off, but I, I really think for one year we need to sit back and let the one-off happen and see what, what transpires next year. Highest interest, interest rates we've had in probably 15 years, 20 years um, right now. So uh, I, I'd, I'd move that we stick to the 1%. We don't add any a la carte items and we, we move forward as is. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Olmsted. Councillor Mort. Just one concern with that. <clears throat> um, uh, majority of the complaints that I received this year were um, lack of lines and or painting of lines that uh, had worn off over the winter. Um, I, I, I think under health and safety we can't let that go. We have to keep up or we actually have to increase our line painting. Um, unfortunately the lines aren't lasting the way they used to. Um, uh, green, yellow paint or whatever. Um, I think under health and safety we should at least leave that, that line item in. If I can get Public Works Manager, can you speak to what is remaining in the budget for next year in terms of line painting? Is there any line painting? There is, yes. Um, for the last few years we've increased small amounts um, to start including um, stop bars. If you notice uh, in 2023 we actually added quite a few stop bars in the village of Cobden, Beechburg and Westmeath. Um, and with this cost it would actually uh, um, it'd increase that to, to, to all the stop bars Within the uh, within the township, and also um, increase the the actual line painting of a hard surface by 25 kilometers, which would include a lot of areas um, that that currently aren't, um, which, which which would provide safety. Um, and additionally, it also adds um, w w with some edge painting. Um, actually, it helps the traffic away from the edge, and especially on, on DST roads, um, that's where a lot of our our, uh, our early fault, like early faults happen, it, it, it's in the edge, um, which potentially could save some the patching costs. Um, but it, it would definitely add some safety. Um, and then also, the major part is actually get all the stop bars completed um, it, uh, within the village, which I, I don't recall it, if, if, if the stop bars were ever painted. Um, we started, I think we've started doing it in the last few projects we've, we've, we've done in the last five years, but um, our, the majority of that, 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 uh, there's a lot of stop there that, 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 that aren't completed within the, the uh, township. Thank you. Any, is that any supplemental comment you want to make, Councilor Moore? Anyone else want to speak to line painting or stop bars?
Good. We'll just hold that. We'll see if there's any other input before we confirmation. But Councillor Moore is proposing that we insert line painting at a 0.22% increase. Good. Uh, I just want to make sure I give opportunity. Deputy Mayor, did you have any comments that you want to make? Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I, I'm kind of in agreement here with Councillor Olmstead. I agree. We, you know, moving forward, we've got still some big decisions to make here before we. Uh, and y'all, you never like to see these types of of um, services go, but I do agree for I think a one year I would be willing to do that. I, I, I come back to the gravel, um, the gravel uh, road. I remember the time where we did not gravel roads and then all of a sudden we had to catch up and it was, it was difficult, it was hard to do and, 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 and we had big increases because of that. But I think for a one time off here, I am willing to go this for the first year, for one year and see where we uh, end up. Good, Councillor Bell. Just as a point of clarification though, um, these services, like these a la carte budget changes, we're not necessarily decreasing services, it's, it, they are services that uh, staff has identified that could potentially use an increase, but we're just basically saying that we're not going to increase them this year due to our budget constraints, is that correct? It's correct, uh, other than the cost of each of these services to provide has gone up. So in turn, by not actually increasing the budget from 2023 to 2024, it does work itself to a slight decrease in actual levels of service. Not a large amount by any means, but it is an overall decrease. This, these a la carte amounts are either to, say the gravel road program, that's to bring it back to what it originally was set up to be able to do the full 10 kilometers. That's to bring it back. So we haven't increased it in a length of time and now we're down to, I believe, 6.25 kilometers, or 7.25 kilometers, sorry. And in order to bring it back to that full amount, that's what, we're, that's what the, the proposal is for that example. Uh, dust control, again, the, the budget itself has not increased from 2023 to 2024. It can only be speculated that the dust yeah, chemical used to actually do the dust suppressant will go up, so it will do less roads. Um, it's just, that's the CPI, the, the, the cost of everything going up equals itself in its own uh, decrease in service. So we can expect these a la carte items to come back year over year until we address the increase in the cost of the, basically the materials and the, and the um, labor that has increased in part, right? So we, we can expect this to continue to hit our, hit the budget items every year from here on out essentially i'm just we're just going to specify not all of them no no okay can we just specify which ones you're speaking to uh so the ones i'm speaking to are the gravel road uh, dust control salaries and wages of course um line painting is only an increase if we want to increase actual level service to provide more lines um and that 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 ends the the ones that are going forward that do you would see kind of kind of going forward the only other side I would note is that if if we weren't doing a 1% increase some of these may have been just put into the budget as just general increases to maintain the level of service not as a decrease it would just we would account for that increase in cost and, and just move that into the budget line item but what has happened this year is to keep that 1% we've more or less moved from 2023 to 2024 and kept everything as is, cutting where we can, that where any savings were to be found. Yeah, I would just add, if, like, if we're gauging no appetite for one of these items, it probably won't come back. So, I mean, uh, recognize and let, short and accept if, if, if we're hearing more, uh, more, more conversations in the public about a certain item. But yeah, I mean, if there's no appetite, for the ones that have no appetite from council, they're probably not gonna come back, but yeah. So just to be clear, yeah, like as you've noted, Councillor Bell, like CIP grants, we're, we still have $10,000 or $15,000 in the budget to support CIPs for 2024. This would just bring it to 25,000. We have community rec grants in our budget. This would bring it to $20,000, not just 10. So these are supplement, supplementing existing programs uh, that we have. Thanks. Good, any other questions? 
Councillor Moore. I see the Westmeath boat launch there. <clears throat> what is the status on that, and uh, can we do without the twenty-five thousand this year, or was this to start a budget, a start a, uh, a a fund? Sorry. That's a good question. And Councillor Trim, did you want to speak to that a little bit? Do you want me to? Yes. Yeah. Either you or I. Uh, but uh, th there is ongoing discussion with. Um, uh, two other levels of government, uh, and uh, uh, a, um, a resident, uh, uh, an interested resident, and so that's going on uh, for free. And uh, we've got some guidance from a, um, uh, a consultant for free. Uh, so I'm thinking that in another budget, uh, it would be uh, probably something council would like to consider uh, when we have more information. So at this time, it's an easier one um, to put off till perhaps next year because we don't have enough information yet to go forward. However, it is something that um, I, I think uh, Whitewater Region should be very interested in uh, because we are a tourist destination, and uh, so we should have opportunities for our own residents and for tourists. Uh, perhaps you would like to add more, Mr. Mayor, but... Uh, the only comment I'll add is that not funding that 25000 for the dredging assessment will not stop it to continue being reviewed. The point that that project is at is trying to define the amount of work, the amount of cubic meters that need to be removed. Once that's defined, it'll be easier to get a total cost, and then we can look for grants. Um, but just like Councillor Trim said, we're not ready to spend that 25, so although it's an important item, it's not at the top of the list. Okay, thank you. Did the CAO, did that trigger any other discussion from you? Uh, I would only add that uh, we did do a, a creek assessment, uh, which examined the sediments that were coming from this creek into that area of the boat launch. So the, uh, the assessment was completed, and uh, through our manager of public works, it's going to come before council in a final draft form uh, for your information and to receive the document. So we'd expect that in the near future. Thanks. Good. Any other questions? Any other comments? So I'll just add the one is that the three items that the top three items are all three that I think we will see again. Like we have to, in order to maintain our gravel roads to a certain standard, we're going to have to increase the amount of annual kilometers that we reinvest in. The dust control, we do need to look at how it's going to go from 80% to 100% or whatever increase is required. And salary and wages, we know that the cost of living does not decrease it's going to increase. So at some point, we're going to have to have some kind of catch up on those three. From what I'm hearing from another member of, uh, a number of members of council is that that equates to about 1.4% and we want to defer that 1.4% from this year. It doesn't mean we're not going to have to look at it next year. Any other comments to that? Good, and I'm going to turn back to Councillor Moore's item. Uh, the line painting. Councillor Moore has indicated he'd like to have that inserted at 0.22%. Correct? I'd have to confer, but um, yeah, at least, <coughs> sorry. Is there any other concurrence from other members of council? Or sorry, CAO. Before I ask that, yeah, just so for clar clarification from Councillor Moore, so we are we do have a budgeted line painting amount, just for clarity, which is at in the range of how much? Do we, do we have an idea? Yeah. I believe it was thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. So this would supplement that. So just to be clear, your what, what's being proposed, uh, you know, what what Councillor Moore perhaps is proposing is that we would increase that to do more line painting. Yeah, just for clarity. Thanks. Good. Concur. Concur. Good. Is there any other members of council that would like to lend their support to that proposal? Good. 
Good. I don't see any. Councillor Moore, we can, you can ask for a motion to meet. We can do a vote on this. Is no, we'll leave it dead on the, t on the table. We're good. Perfect. Okay. If there is, is there any final other recommendations for us to consider for the a la carte budget changes listed on this slide? And seeing none, you now have the direction, Treasurer. If we can move on to the next slide, please. Perfect. <coughs> so the next section is the Capital and Special Project Budget. Uh, so the funding sources, as I stated before, I, we haven't received any confirmation yet for OCIF or CCBF. Uh, so we're still budgeting uh, based on the 2023 allocations. Um, and the other side is our uh, taxation and capital reinvestment reserve. Uh, as noted in the other presentation on the first, uh, it's proposed to use uh, $392,650 of that capital reinvestment reserve that has been being built since, I believe it was 2017, um, towards the new debentures for Olmsted, Jeffrey Lake, and Cameron Vera Crescent and Earl Street. Um, so overall, we have a, uh, the, the 298, which was from our 2023 levy, the proposed 4.2% equals 284,460. And then in the, also in the, included in the budget is the 404, 442. So this is what the 4.2 looks like uh, for capital uh, investment. If we continue to every year push towards that 4.2% uh, levy increase. Um, so in 2023, we had a 4.8% levy increase. Uh, in 2024, we're proposing 4.2%. Uh, so, so far, uh, that 4.2 is built now to $582,742, and it'll keep continue to building. So by the year 2032, we'll have uh, $3.5 million. Uh, that allows us to do um, projects under our own steam without depending on grants, uh, it's like the OCIF and the CCBF, which at current rate are the only things that we actually use to rebuild roads. Um, so without those funds, we wouldn't be redoing any roads, uh, just just by base principle of for other other capital assets that require uh, require renewal. Any questions on that? Lead with a question before I turn it over to Council Bell. Just to go back to that slide, what is the current? What does uh, what do the estimates say that we need to invest? in our capital, our buildings, our roads, our storm sewers, how much money should we be investing every year? So per our asset management plan, they uh, noted it as $12.2 million, I believe. Annually? Annually. And right now we're with the, uh, per the other slide, we're at 987,000. However, 400,000 of that is being allocated to the debt for a capital item. So really it's $582,742 is really what we're putting away for capital. So we have more assets than we can afford to replace or maintain? Yes? Yeah. Okay, and Councillor Bell. It was bas basically a question on that, along that same line, like is that 4.2%, is that, is that the right number? Is that, is that what we're aiming for? And I guess that you just kind of answered the question is around that $12 million is kind of what what staff has in their minds or what, what the report has told us that we should be reinvesting into our capital infrastructure. But is that realistic? Is that something that we're striving for as a township or is something along the lines of 2032 at that $3 million in reserves? Is that something that's more realistic and um like where where is that number that we should be striving for versus what you know what's realistic versus what's what's unrealistic essentially so it, that's a difficult question to come with a clear answer um when our asset management plan was done so that i should put a piece put a piece of clarification the 12.2 million dollars i believe was also including our water and wastewater assets as well. So if we take those out and just look straight at taxation, which is what we're looking at now, it's 9.6, I believe, million. And what they've done is this 4.2 in 20 years allows us to make that $9.6 million to come to that annual replacement. So we're able to renew all the assets at that point in time per year to have a full amount to continue to keep our assets at a, a elevate, like a, a operating full 
full replacement uh, levy at that point in time. Um, the schedule itself does need to be reviewed uh, due to the fact that there is uh, OREG regulations coming up and, and, le and legislations that we need to meet, uh, which will change that asset management plan and, and cause us to renew it, uh, review it. Uh, we also have proposed inside this budget the 0.25 of an asset management coordinator, which was also brought up at the uh, November 15th meeting. So that position will actually be reviewing that plan, ensuring that the information in it is still accurate so that we can move to the next step and review the entire plan to see if that 4.2 is the number it needs to be or whether it needs to be lower or needs to be higher. Um, it, it's unknow, unknown whether the, at that point in time, because we had a consultant do it at the, at the original point whenever the plan was created, and that was their projection. So with general inflation, with the cost of the assets that was provided to them, 4.2% over the 20 years gets us to that $9.6 million. So as part of that assessment, um, like the affordability to the residents that are paying this 4.2% year over year to 2032, like is that, was there a portion of that report or part of that, that consulting fee that looks at, these are the residences, these are the median incomes. If we continue to charge a 4.2% capital uh, increase year over year over year, what that does to the affordability to the residents that live in, in Whitewater like, yeah, we have enough to replace our roads uh, or do $3 million in, in capital investment in 2032, but can anybody afford to live here at, with interest rates the way they are right now with cost of living adjustments? Um, how do we find out that piece or, or are, we, are we thinking about that moving forward as far as the affordability of this? So the affordability piece was not directly put into the asset management plan. It was more of a renewal on current levels of service and at current assets. So we, we would have to look, as, as council, you would have to look at decreasing in levels of service in order to remove certain assets from that a bit, a need to be replaced. That would be the only cost savings because they projected out the cost to renew these assets over that entire period if we kept the exact same assets and had to do the exact same level of service with no, no changes. The minute we change anything, a level service increase or decrease, decrease would save us money in the fact we don't have to renew an asset. Um, and that's that's the, the other side. So the new regulation, whenever it comes out for 2025, the reporting requirement uh, requires us to look at our current levels of service and our projected levels of service for the future. So it'll tie that piece into that asset management plan. This current one did not require that. The next The next section will. Uh, and I'll just add one comment and I'll throw it back at the CAO. Um, we learned this looking in hindsight at the water and wastewater study. The decision, the decisions that we take in terms of investing our capital and what capital we keep, we don't, at the time we make that decision, we don't look at the impact on rates over time. And, and that needs to be incorporated because it's going to trigger those discussions. Do we decrease levels of service? Do we decrease the number of assets to keep it affordable? So it's it's a three it's almost three stages of analysis. It's not let's let's just keep increasing 4.2 for 20 years uh, at some point, and and hopefully with the new O rig that looks at level of service, it's going to start to hit those triggers, and it's going to say yes. If you keep this level of service and you keep this number of assets, this is what your taxpayer is going to pay 20 years from now. Good, CAO? Yeah, and I guess the, the, the province through these regulations is also looking to see how we're gonna fund that. So if you say that you wanna keep five fire halls and three arenas and, and, and 200 kilometers of paved road, they're gonna, they're gonna require us to show them how we're gonna pay for that and how we're gonna increase our general levy to support the investment to replace those, those assets. So I think one, a, a good example here would be the, you know, the, the the uh, the the um, the ice facilities, not so much the buildings themselves, but the ice facilities. Uh, the 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 replacement cost of an arena is much more than a community center. So, you know, as time progresses and decisions are made and the like, the asset management plan should be amended so that 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 nine million dollars gets modified to be less and less and less, so that we could find a sustainable balance, a sustainable balance moving forward. So. Um, my goal ideally would be to um, 
as Councillor Be Be uh, Trim has noted, a 1% operating increase is, is pretty difficult to do, and I will say that we've, we've had a challenge to do that uh, while maintaining a good level of service. Uh, uh, so moving forward, ideally, we try to you know, maintain that 5.2%, but we demonstrate to Council that the 4.2 doesn't, doesn't need to be 4.2 no more. It could be 4 or it could be 3.5. And then we, we try to uh, support operating increases, dust control and all that through that, that difference. So that would be sort of a, a balance that I'd be trying to strive for, uh, for the members of council and for our residents, right? Thanks. Good, any other questions on this portion of the presentation? Good, I'm just gonna go back to the grants. Uh, I think it's back one slide. <coughs> and just for, the, for anybody that may be watching, um, you broke down the... I didn't have a slide, so I, just, remember, I just spoke to it on this slide. Okay. Can the you OC speak to it again just so we can... Sure. So OCIF is our Ontario uh, Community Infrastructure Fund uh, in 2023, and unconfirmed is 2024. In 2023, we received $561,652. And CCBF is our Canada Community Building Fund, which is a federal grant. Uh, it was 231956 for 2023. Uh, again, 2024 hasn't been confirmed yet. Those uh, fundings go towards um, infrastructure, core infrastructure assets. So roads, uh, certain arena facilities. So uh, you'll see in later, the, the humidifier piece is projected to be funded by CCBF. Um, core infrastructure is in buildings um, and infrastructure works uh, that have to do with other uh, pieces like water, wastewater, things like that. Okay, thank you for amplifying that. <coughs> if there's no other questions from council, we'll move on to the next section, please. Thank you. Perfect. So the next section is the actual capital and special projects that have been proposed by uh, staff. Um, so under environmental services, uh, it's recycled containers for events at 7,500. These are all to be funded by the waste reserve. Uh, landfill improvements, which is gates, bins, and tarps. There's a slide coming forward that I'll speak more to that. And it was spoken to about uh, the presentation that was on the 15th. And then a snowblower for the landfill. Um, the landfill compactor has been removed from this line item from the prior presentation on November 1st. Uh, the reason for that is because it as an item would have to be debentured and the uh, expected time whenever we'd be able to actually receive the compactor per the quotes from some contractors would be six to nine months. So if we purchased it in early 2024, we wouldn't expect to receive it till July to September of 2024, which would mean our first debenture payment would not actually happen until 2025. So it really has no impact on the actual 2024 budget other than uh, the actual purchase of the equipment. So there'll be a report brought back to council in early January, uh, looking for direction on whether we tender out for that piece of equipment. And then uh, in 2025 is when the actual impact of that purchase would be, would be realized. Um, and the revenue at that point in time would be available to cover it. Currently, the way the budget is right now, there's nothing set aside to make a payment onto a new debenture like that in this year. So that's why I, I, we push to or propose to remove it at this point in time. So it's not a piece for decision at, at right now, but it will be in, in January. Uh, this is the uh, kind of a, a synopsis of what the capital works looks like for that $60,000. Uh, it was spoken to in the, the landfill report that was brought at the last council meeting. So it's uh, 8,500 for blast mats to be used as alternative cover to reduce landfill filling rates. Uh, fencing and gates at 18,500 for the uh, fencing and gates around the perimeter of the licensed landfill area. Uh, waste bins uh, for $28,000, which is two 20 yard bins to be used with the new convenience door depot. Uh, cameras and intercom to be at a $5,000 to increase safety for atten attendant and allow for inspection of loads and to provide site security during closure. And the intercom is to increase safety and communications with the customer. Um, under the general government, uh, we have the computers, which is an annual thing for replacement, 10500 to come from the levy. Uh, staff tablets, which is for uh, our main departments that don't work in the office, um, in order for them to do uh, the implementation of electronic timesheets 
uh, work orders and, and other aspects like that to fully more utilize the softwares that we already purchase. Uh, and the asbestos management plan, which is a study that's required for our asset retirement obligations. Uh, under protective services is the fire training site, uh, $50,000 under the levy. Uh, fire PPE bunker gear, $40,000 under the levy. And the fire tanker, uh, this is going to reserve because the purchase will happen in 2025. Um, the note is the co total cost of the tanker is $550,000, which is a 2023 estimate. Uh, in 2023, there was actually $100,000 already put to reserve for this purchase of this item. So, yeah, in total in that reserve, come the end of 2024, it'll be $152,679.01. Um, the next is the Recreation and Cultural Services, which is the carbon arena dehumidifier, uh, as it would be the arena that would be operating ICE uh, facilities, uh, $69,000 for a replacement for it, and this is one that would come from our CCBF funding. Uh, and then the Westmeath Parquet, which was brought up at the last council meeting, so it's been added to this line uh, to show the $10,000, which was already put into reserve just to come out of reserve and actually be uh, put forward for that uh, that. Um, little structure at the at the parquet. Uh, the under transportation services, uh, there's been no change to this line or this slide uh, since the last presentation. So it's the salt shed at seventy five thousand uh, dollars, a trailer uh, at fourteen thousand one hundred fifty two. It's the levy and, and capital reinvestment reserve, uh, a light truck at seventy thousand dollars coming from the levy, the tandem plow truck, which is scheduled to be received, I believe, January February of twenty twenty four, which is levy and the roads reserve. Uh, the roads reserve, what I note there is we put $100,000 away for that purchase of that vehicle in 2023. Uh, the total cost of it is 377, uh, 321. So the only 277 will actually have to be coming from this year's uh, levy. Um, rapid road, a third surface treatment um, to extend the life of that, that road. Uh, so it's $280,000 to be funded by OSIF. Uh, Colesmith, Queen's Line to Caroline, uh, DST is $220,000, OSIF and CCBF funding for that. Um, Alva Drive and White Beach Cul-de-Sac, that's $10,000 from OSIF. Sutherland Road, DST to Gravel um, is $42,000 funded by OSIF. Hyla Road, which is Beachburg Road to Zion <coughs> Line, uh, DST to Gravel, uh, $65,000 again funded through OSIF. And then we're proposing uh, put a small chunk of $108,000 of the OSIF funding uh, in a reserve for a future road project. Any questions? Questions from council. Councillor Trim. <coughs> yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to the treasurer. Uh, slide 52, the um, staff tablets. Um, uh, is does this price include the software for the tablets? It does. Is there an ongoing cost for that software? Do we rent it or do we own it? Uh, it would be a uh, rented software. However, it'd just be an add-on to a current software we already are purchasing. Okay. Um, so the overall cost is very minimal, and it would be all kind of offset in the uh, cost associated with administering the payroll system the way we do now in time savings and an allocation of staff time to other other projects uh, if i may here mm. um southern uh, uh slide 55 sutherland road dst to gravel there are two parts to sutherland road um <laughs> sorry so it's the piece between the highway and uh, snake river line i believe so it's the opposite side. It's not the, the curved portion between Periton Road and the other end of Sutherland. It's the piece on... Up going. the hill. Exactly. Okay. And finally, um, the replacement uh, trailer for $14,000. What, what's that trailer used for? F fairly small trailer. So that trailer is the current float that floats the uh, sidewalk machine. So the new tractor that was purchased, the, the trailer itself is at the end of its useful life. Uh, rotted out uh, just beyond its repairable ability so this cost is to purchase a new trailer for that function thank you mr mayor <coughs> councillor bell the uh, road survey that was um, part of the last budget um, 
where are we on that? And is that directing some of the decisions that we're making whenever it comes to the reconstruction of these roads, changing them from DST to gravel? Or have we received the results of that yet as far as um, how that's going to direct how we manage our roads moving forward? Yes, yeah, so we, we haven't yet. Um, the, the actual scan was completed, I believe, in um, early October. Um, and with the with the uh, the actual sidewalks was completed also, I believe in August, I think it was, and the, the data from that should be received any time now, um, which council will receive. Um, that will help moving forward in creating an actual capital plan for the road list. Um, and that will actually provide, you know, that will guide us uh, to, 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 to determine what roads um, could move up in the list. Um, it's not always the worst road is the, is, is the next one, um, depending on how it fits in with our capital plan. And I'll additionally, um, and, and how much um, uh, uh, traffic and, and where, it, where, it, where it's safe in a village versus a uh, 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 rural road. So th th there are multiple factors that will come in play if, with the uh, um, with the capital plan. An additional, if a road is already poor, for example, um, potentially you might you might use a like for example a uh, uh, rapid road for example would would have a higher uh, uh, PCI index, but we're we're we're, we're, um, we're uh, maintaining it for example, and that's not, that will show in the in the in a capital plan that we're actually uh, like. Uh, 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 renewing some roads, but but also also shown plan that um, in so many years that we actually uh, um, um, renewal um, other uh, by by um, uh, shaving paving for example some roads or or adding the the um, a third lift of of DSD. Good. Anything else, Councillor Bill? Any other questions, members of council? Before I go back to Councillor Trim. Okay, Councillor Trim. Yes, just uh, a concern. Uh, the reason why um, uh, Sutherland, that portion of Sutherland Road is paved primarily is because of the hill. Uh, that hill is very difficult to maintain with respect to washouts. So it'll be something to watch this year uh, because that may be our road that after some experience, uh, we may have to we may have to pave again. Uh, it's a very steep hill, and um, it can be quite dangerous uh, if uh, because of the washouts. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good noted by staff. Good. If there's no other questions, I have one. Uh, on the list that you have over the multiple slides. There's a number of items which are new, and those items aren't currently in our asset management plan. So we are actually increasing our number of assets. Now, I know the dollar figures aren't substantial in this one, but I just want to recognize that. The second thing is, is that to have a new asset should impact operating in some way. Can you confirm that? At this point in time, there's no impact in operating, but in subsequent years, we should have an impact in operating in order to make, whether it's software licenses or it's replacing something that happens in the new Schultz shed. Can you speak to that, please? So, yeah, so there, of, of a majority of the new assets, there is very little impact to the overall operating uh, to be projected going forward. Like you stated, if something <laughs> breaks inside the, the new the new salt shed, it would have to be replaced, which would be a, a new cost under the building repairs and maintenance line. However, we, can't, we budget those lines to incorporate those things. These changes in assets won't have a drastic effect in any way on the, the actual day-to-day uh, -day operations piece. It's more for to um, save money in the fact of like the tablets is to make become more efficient. Um, the landfill uh, equipment is again just to uh, become that efficiency side to look for cost savings in other areas. So the cost savings offset the new the cost of these new facility these new pieces that we're uh, uh, we're uh, purchasing. Uh, the yin and the yang it just levels out. Perfect. I just think it's important for us to be able to track that. Mm -hmm. Every decision we have has an impact 
not just on a capital expenditure, but our operating budget and our future asset management plan. So as those things are presented, and I know we talked about this with the landfill compactor, mm -hmm. it's important that those that all that information gets presented to council all at once so that the decision can be taken um, fully knowing we're essentially pre-approving increases in operating. Mm -hmm. Right? You can't agree to buy something and then decide not to sustain it. Uh, we just need to know what that impact will be in the future. That's good. Any other questions from members of council? Okay, green light. Next uh, slides, please. Perfect. So this just comes to another council direction page um, to accept the proposed 2024 capital special projects as presented uh, and bring forward to the public meeting uh, or to amend any of the proposals. Is there any amendments from members of council? Seeing none, we're good. Move on, please. Perfect. So this is a summary page. The total taxation levy increase is put, uh, proposed at 5.2%. So the tax increase is the 1% operating and the tax increase for capital is a 4.2, which comes to our total of 5.2. Uh, again, speaking to the um, main drivers behind the 1% uh, staffing, cost of living increase, health benefits, inflation pressures, insurance and debentures, and then the 4.2 capital, which just comes to our funding sources. So this is what uh, the estimated effect on municipal tax rates looks like. Um, so you can see to the right is the 2023 and to the left is 2024. So in 2024 on $100,000 of assessment, uh, you would be taxed $726.86, uh, an increase over 2023 of $17.12. On our median uh, assessed property, it's uh, a total increase of $31. And then we move on to water and wastewater. Good. I just, uh, is there any questions on those last two slides from any members of council? None? Okay. I'd like to propose that we take a short recess for a bio break and then we'll come back and uh, delve into water and wastewater. Perfect. Okay. So try to be back in your seats about five minutes, please.
And welcome back to the Township Whitewater Region special meeting for the 22nd of November. It's 640 and we'll reconvene uh, back to the treasurer to continue with water and wastewater. Thank you. So for water and wastewater, um, it remains unchanged from the original presentation, the water increase at 8.5%, uh, driving factors, the aqua contract and debentures. Uh, wastewater increase 12.5%, same driving factors. So this is a kind of a history of how water rates have gone since 2020, which was the completion of our water wastewater rate study. Um, so in 2020, the rate study for water recommended uh, increase of 20%, council went 21%. The next year was uh, a recommended of 10, actual increase was nine. In 2022 was the year that there was a a substantial change or deviation from the original uh, rate study. Uh, it was recommended 10, uh, council chose two. Uh, the next year was a year to try and get back on track. Uh, it went 9.3 when it was recommended 10. This year we're recommending 8.5 over the 10 and then over the next years for the following end of that actual rate study uh, for the 10 years is a 7.8 to 5.9 staggering down where they went 8% and then staggered down to 3%. Um, I will note that the wastewater, water wastewater study is being uh, budgeted to be redone uh, because it has to be redone for our license anyways and just to allocate for the new, new water, wastewater facility and for any changes in growth and the, the overall costs of, of items. Uh, when the study was actually done, they did a projection of 2% as a cost of living increase or a CPI increase and that's not nearly what it is today or has been for the last number of years, and that's what one of the driving inf uh, factors to these increased rates compared to what they originally projected. Um, again, just to summarize wastewater, it was, the actual increase was 20% in 2020, rate study recommended 20. Next year in 2021, the rate study recommended 60%, uh, the township went 30. Uh, in 2022, we were on par, five for five, and then in 2023, to try and get back on track because of that uh, lower amount in 2021, it was 12% where the recommended was four. And we're still in that situation where we're trying to um, get back on track. But I will note that the 12.55% was recommended for this year. Uh, they had originally talked 3%, but that is just to break even uh, in that department. Um, because overall costs are that much more expensive, extensive than the original study, which is again why the, the study itself needs to be uh, relooked at. Uh, this is just, just shows our changes between for water units. This is what we actually bill based on. Um, so we have our residential, small commercial, medium commercial, high commercial. Um, so whenever I talk number of units, it's actually the weighted factor of units. So it's not the actual number of facilities. Uh, so per our original bylaw for how uh, water and wastewater is classified, a uh, residential unit has got a weighting factor of one. Uh, small commercial, again, same thing, a water weighting factor of one. A median commercial is 1.5 because it's expected to use that much more water compared to a residential unit. High commercial is a two. And then multi-residential is 80%. Um, and then our metered is straight metered off of uh, a per uh, cubic meter of, of water usage. As you can see, between 2023 to 2024, the start of 2024 will have gone up seven units uh, overall. So the water rates, uh, this is what they look like for uh, 2024. Uh, so a residential annual uh, increase is $91.92 to 17, 11.73.77, or 33, sorry. Uh, with um, small commercial the same, medium commercial going to 17.61.22, an increase of 137.98. Uh, high commercial going to 2347.87, an increase of 183.93, and then uh, multi-res going from 938.67 uh, with an increase of $73.54, and uh, our metered rate going up 16 cents. This is the 8.5% increase. This slide has changed uh, since our last presentation. So there's been con uh, contact with Aqua, our contract provider, and uh, on a, a diligent effort by our public works manager to try to find cost savings um, in that contract. 
So you'll notice that the contract now uh, is listed to 508,800. Originally, when we when this presentation came forward on November 1st, it was 592,700. Uh, the reason for the uh, drastic decrease is because electricity and gas has been pulled out. So originally, they as a contractor were paying those on our behalf, but then on top of that, we were paying a management fee to them to, to provide that service to them to administer it. So we're pulling that process back under the township. Uh, so we will administer the hydro and the gas facilities so we save the actual um, management fee that's associated with that. So it act, in all aspects, it saved us uh, $9,500, which I've uh, reallocated to the transfer to reserves. So it was the transfer to reserves was really originally set at 185320 It's now set at 194820 so this is the now breakdown of the actual um, contract. So you can see the sellers and management fee, 357,600, chemicals 62,5, and supplies and equipment 88,7, compared to our prior year. The prior year showing the electricity of 50,672, or 622, These are the proposed capital and special projects uh, to do with water. Um, Oh, I noticed I did not make the amendment yet for the financial plan and rate study. That is actually uh, $32,000, not 50. Um, the Beachburg Water Distribution Analyzer is 10. The Cobden Water Distribution and Analyzer is at 62.50, and the refurb uh, engineering of Cobden filter number one uh, is $35,000. Any questions? Thank you, Treasurer. Councillor Olmsted. Yeah, just back to slide number 65. What is the other in 23 versus 24? So the other is um, equipment, capital, like equipment repairs and maintenance, building repairs and maintenance, uh, capital purchases that are proposed by Aqua, like by, by our contract provider, um, flushings of uh, sewer of water lines, uh, sewer or water line breaks, uh, repairs. Um, Trying to think of the other stuff. And uh, yeah, so the, uh, all those associated costs with the refurb uh, of those type of lines that is not put out in the contract. The contract itself does the actual services, but the repairs of the buildings and things like that, that comes under the other. Thank you. Any other questions? None? I'm gonna, <coughs> can I get you to go back to the first slide? please. Oh, sorry, second slide. I just want to confirm those metered units that we have. Mm -hmm. I notice we have a per cubic meter cost. I think it's the next slide. Yep. Um, does that include fixed costs as well? Is that per, per cubic meter? Is there a fixed rate on top of the metered rate? How do we incorporate the, the rates that might not, or the costs that might not be want. meter cubed rates? Oh uh, yep. So the, the actual meters do not have a, a, fi a fixed rate or a base rate, per se, um, but there is um, <coughs> uh, wording in, in the actual um, that it's it's metered rate or um, or, or based on the small um, uh, sorry like smart commercial um, or whatever is, is smaller I guess or, or, or gr I guess greater. Perfect. Thank you. And next slide. Sorry, I didn't make notes here. And next slide. No, oh, and next slide. Good. Can you speak to the increase that we're seeing in chemical costs and the decrease in supplies and equipment? So the supplies and equipment uh, under the supplies was actually where the gas costs were. Mm -hmm. So that's what our decrease is in there. Uh, the increase in chemicals is just uh, the actual cost of the chemicals has gone up that much uh, projected into 2024 uh, as what they're seeing so far in 2023. Just the actual cost of the chemicals themselves, the chlorine um, and other chemicals like that to treat the water itself. And are we getting any advantage uh, through uh, procurement instruments? Is there any other way for us to decrease those chemical costs through any other procurement instruments that might work with other communities and, and, and decrease the cost based on volume? 
I'll pass that to the public works manager. Yep, so Aqua has provided that um, there's a cost savings because um, when they actually, uh, when, when a chemical delivery actually happens, it's not just white water. Um, they actually come in and do actually multiple um, of their, of their, their uh, facilities in, in, in different municipalities, so there's a cost savings that way. Um, they have provided that the cost savings is just coming to Whitewater. Um, it would be the same, same, same delivery cost if it's half full of a truck of chemicals or if it was full. Um, and that's where the, the cost savings is in, in the buying power of Aqua. Um, how many more years are we on a contract or the current contract with Aqua? It is up in 2024, November 2024. Thank you. Good. Next slide, please. Good. Uh, can you uh, provide some more detail? What do you mean by a Cobden filter number one refurb engineering? What does that mean? So the facility itself, uh, the filter itself was proposed to be replaced back in 2019, I believe, uh, but the cost was substantially over the original estimate uh, from everything that came in of tendering. So the uh, engineering is to see if the, if the filter itself needs to be the size it is, what, what the requirements are for going forward with the actual replacement of it, or whether, we, whether it's a replacement or whether it's a full replacement. Uh, so a refurb on it costs $550,000, but a replacement costs $1.9 million. So the engineering is more to determine what is more beneficial and all the, the, the cost saving measures that can go along with that. When do we tender out that engineering contract? We have not yet. So it, 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 it's been proposed in 2024. Good, and I, and I do note that you've updated verbally that that 50,000 is actually 32. Is that what you said, Treasurer? Uh, 32 or 35, I believe. I will uh, I'll confirm. Good, and again, that would be tendered out in the new year? Correct. Good. And is that the last slide? I... It is. Perfect. Does that trigger any other questions from members of council? Councillor Moore. Page 69, please. Uh, we haven't come to 69 yet. That's the wastewater. Yeah. Is that 69? That's 69, yep. Oh, well. Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, small commercial. How do we get a 0.5? So uh, under small commercial uh, halls are 0 0.5. If okay. they're under a certain amount of usage, they get a 0.5 usage of, of small commercial if they're under certain square footage without a kitchen. Okay, thank you. Dr. Olmstead. <clears throat> Sorry, just back to slide 65, please. Um, and I know it's m minute, but I'm just wondering, just seeing the FTE one year over the next, so we're not looking at any any changes to staff in there, right? Or Aqua's not? No, so it, this, the FTE is not Aqua. The FTE is actually our uh, staff. So there's a portion so of, the, of, of, okay. the, of the superintendent I have put there. Um, and uh, as a management coordinator, is that what the one, right. one is going there for? So just an allocation. Yeah, right. exactly. Great. Great, thank you. Perfect. Any other questions? Councillor Bell. What is the uh, reserve at right now? So we're sending 194 this year, 342. What's the total of the current reserves for the water? Uh, I'd have to come back to council with that. I don't have that number off the top of my head right this second. Okay. Um, yeah, I'd have to come back. We'll just take, uh, sorry, CEO, go ahead. Yeah, if I could just add that um, the um, we're currently in the engineering design of the uh, upgrades to the Beechburg water treatment plant um, that's being funded through a grant from the provincial and federal government. Uh, that project is being funded from reserves, as I understand it, uh, yeah, yeah. for for for, for five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So that was, I think, one third of the cost, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. Or mm -hmm. um, so so yeah so. 
um, there, are, there are some expenses that are expected, but yeah, certainly Curtis can get you a summary of what it looks like uh, moving into 2024. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you. Any other questions? Good. Then we'll move on. Thank you, Treasurer. Good. <coughs> so now it comes to wastewater units. Um, so we've seen a uh, increase of 12.5 units. They're weighted the exact same way as water, uh, residential, small commercial, medium commercial, high commercial, multi-res, and metered. Uh, where re residential is a one, medium commercial is a 1.5, high commercial is a two, and multi-res is an 80%. Uh, it comes out to the, a total increase of 12.5 units uh, overall. Uh, so this is what we're looking at for the 2024 rates. Um, so. The residential rate will go up $212.05, which is 1901 73 Small commercial, the same. Medium commercial will go up to 28 uh, increase of 31801 um, High commercial will go up to 38 uh, increase of 42410 And uh, multi-res, 152189 up 169.70. And the metered rate will go up 54.8 cents. So the revised uh, wastewater budget itself, again, we were able to take the electricity and gas costs out of the contract, which is where the contract change has happened. So the original contract was costing uh, 579,300. Uh, so the overall savings in that contract itself is 151,5. And we've allocated 139,1 of that, which is our electricity cost. So uh, what you'll have noted is Originally, in this presentation on the first, there was no transfer to reserve. Now there is uh, the ability to have a reserve, a transfer of twelve thousand four hundred dollars. So that's why the the rates themselves have not changed. It's just been a reallocation from the actual contract to the transfer to a transfer to reserve. Uh, this is the breakdown of the uh, actual contract itself: salaries and management fee two eighty six, chemicals eighty one, uh, sludge and electricity at zero and supplies and equipment at 60. And again, in uh, supplies and equipment, uh, the original side was higher, uh, but they've, uh, it's now decreased because of the removal of gas. Any questions? Questions from members of council? I see Councillor Tabbert. I understand that if a home is no longer receiving water or wastewater, um, they're still charged, is that correct? No, so they're, they're charged, there's two sides to that. The, direct, the full answer is they not charge a full charge. There's a vacant piece where they're charged 20%. So we actually apply an 80% credit to both of the, the water and the wastewater. So they're charged 20% of both the charges. It's more or less just for the connection. Sorry. And do we have a fund to cover that if and when it happens? So that comes out of, it would come out of reserve just as a st stabilization piece, because it's hard to say how many facilities would actually need that, that uh, ability to go into uh, a vacant side. We don't have very many properties that actually go that way. It's only whenever I say a house burns or something of, to that nature happens, uh, extenuating circumstances that causes that. Um, the only thing we do budget for is whenever, uh, say, a high commercial or medium commercial shuts off their water, we then switch them over to tw a a only paying 20%. They save 80% because they're not using their water for the, for the winter. We charge them the $50 to shut off their water, and then they're charged 20% up to the point when they turn their water back on because they're not using it. <coughs> is that figured into our budget? That, that is, yeah. Okay. That that part is because it's cyclical. It's been the same. It's the same businesses every year, so we can attach that into the revenue. Okay. And do we? Do you know how many um, homes and or businesses are currently on uh, the twenty percent? Off the top of my head, I wouldn't say more than five. I think I think it's I think it's around five. Thank you. Thanks for those questions, Councillor Tabert. Um, and I'll just trigger. Does it, is that automatic, the 20% on a, on a house fire, as an example? Because like they also receive a, a rebate in terms of their taxes. 
uh, generally 357 or something like that you, you got it so generally what we do is whenever we file a 357 to amend their assessment um, for the fact that the property is no longer has a home on it if it's a complete destroy, destroy or whatever st stand uh, the, the fire has caused, um, that then causes, we then attach that to our water side and automatically do that decrease. Um, I'm not gonna say it's perfect that it happens right away, but it does get retroactive effective back to the date of the actual uh, date of loss. Perfect, good. Any other questions from members of council? Good, I see Councillor Olmstead calculating something quickly. I will pause for a few minutes. No, if I may, it's it just, it, it's, the, I spoke earlier about the elephant in the room they're going to get to, and this is the elephant in the room. Um, we absolutely need to put our best foot forward in figuring out water and wastewater, and probably 80 to 90% of the properties within this town water and wastewater rates are higher than the tax rate the, the taxes the actual full taxes on, on on houses so it's it's not pretty um do i have a solution absolutely not um uh, we don't have much choice but to go with what's suggested we absolutely need a new rate study it's not going to get prettier it's probably going to get worse but um it's up to the seven of us for the next year a couple of years to really this will be uh, this council's biggest hurdle to get over during this term is to figure out what the hell we're going to do because it, it's uh, this one keeps me up at night. I know I'm not saying anything you guys don't already know, but uh, we really need to put our best foot forward here and figure this out because it is ugly. And on that news, I'll turn the floor back. Thank you. Good. I'll use this as an opportunity. We don't happen to have that resolution on the water and wastewater like you had on November 1st? Uh, no, I don't. No, I don't. The one that was uh, the outcome of the presentation by our manager, um, I, I don't think we have it readily available, but we could certainly share it with with all the members of council. Is there a particular reason you're seeking I, that? I just wanted to review it again to outline what we what action we are taking because as councillor Olmsted and I'll see if I can do most of it from memory <laughs> I'm sure I'll get guided um, councillor Olmsted has pointed out we're we're stuck these these are actual real costs being incurred to provide these these op, these levels of service we're regulated by the provincial government in terms of how those services are delivered our personal responsibility to make sure that they're maintained to a certain level um, and the standards by which the the effluent is managed or, or monitored as it leaves the wastewater plant these are all imposed on us with a full understanding of what that impact is in terms of this rate and I agree with Councillor Olmstead we've we will make every effort to share this story with <coughs> every level of government possible no oh, he's got part of it there that's from the yeah thank you so just to review what council agreed to do if i can remember Yeah, do you have it up in front of you? Yeah, I do, yeah. yeah please, can you go ahead? So that uh, so there are three portions of the motion. One was to issue letters to the associations of municipalities of Ontario, so AMO, and to the Rural Ontario Municipal Association, ROMA, uh, outlining, the, outlining the affordability challenges relating to Whitewater's uh, water and wastewater rates. Uh, so that, those letters were issued, and, and you could speak to that, uh, Mayor Nicholson, but they were attached to the agenda as correspondence, I, I, if I recall correctly, at the last council meeting. So then secondly, to request a joint meeting with uh, Cheryl Gallant, MP of, uh, of, our, of, our, uh, of our community, uh, and, and Mr. Yakubuski, MPP uh, for our community as well, as well as with County of Renfrew Warden Peter Emo, outlining the affordability challenges relating to our water and wastewater rates. So as I understand it, our clerk is working to organize meetings with, uh, with those representatives. Um, so then uh, through these members of parliament, provincial and federal, 
to request delegations with specific ministries, so federally with the Minister of Infrastructure Canada, requesting additional funding to subsidize the total cost of wastewater treat for the wastewater treatment plant. So uh, our funding for the wastewater treatment plant was three parties, so federal, provincial, and, uh, and local here. Uh, users. So, and then the second item under under subsection two is to through the issue a request through Mr. Yakubuski's office for joint or individual delegations with um, the Honourable Kinga Surma, which is the Minister of Infrastructure, and Andrea Kanjin, who is the Minister of the Environment, Conservation, and Parks, uh, requesting additional funding to subsidize the total cost of w of the wastewater treatment plant reconstruction. So, to the second uh, to that sub bullet. Uh, I will note that uh, the delegation request through Roma, uh, the deadline to submit that was on Monday. So we, uh, you know, I through uh, through council did submit those delegations uh, to those two agencies. So, uh, but we are also seeking to have specific uh, delegations with these ministers with Mr. Mr. Yakubuski, and then thirdly to, to direct staff to provide a report on options relating to efficiencies and or revenue generation and, and examples I uh, include water meters, septage treatment, the funding model, aqua optimization, et cetera. So again, that's uh, through myself to staff to, to come back with council, to council with a report on potential efficiencies, noting that we have found one as part of today's budget presentation is the uh, pulling out of electricity, it's electricity as I understand it, um, from the, the contract uh, to, to find some, some savings, uh, which is important, but, uh, but yeah, those are the three items that were moved by Council at the meeting of October 18th. Those three items, we're continuing to work on those. And, uh, and like what was provided, Councillor Moore just provided it here, uh, copies of the letters that went to the MPP, the MP, the warden, and the three advocacy groups for municipalities here in Ontario and federally, they're as part of agenda and for the public to be able to see and, and look at what we are trying to do. Um, in addition to that, we have started to reach out to municipalities in similar situations to us. It's scary, but there are others that are in worse circumstances than ours with rates higher. And they've been dealing with those rates for a number of years. So we've reached out to those communities, asked them to join us in this, lend their voice to our plight with AMO and Roma. Uh, they've agreed so far. So uh, we'll continue to advocate as much as we possibly can. Uh, and, and right now, Councillor Olmsted, I think, unless you, unless you or any other member of council can think of something to add, to that resolution, we're going to continue to work that angle and until we're told no. Is that any other comments from members of council or staff? Is there any other additional comments you want to make? Councilor Olmstead. Yeah, and, and just just to drive the point home, based on the screen in front of you, our situation's getting worse at an increasing rate. So our, our, we, we don't have a taxation issue. We're right in the middle of the road, Renfrew County. We're, we're, we're pretty good. Our, our, based on the average, our tax rate's going to go up 2.4% this year. Our water wastewater rate's going to go up 10.9% this year. So they're already paying double in wastewater than their taxes. And taxes is going up slightly and wastewater's So that, 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 that side's just moving at too, too quick a rate. So we really need to call... Uh, call in some favors here and call in the guard because uh, it, it, it's really a mess that, that uh, I hate to keep using that word, but I have no other word for it. it. It's a mess we really need to get under control quickly. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Olmsted. Is there any other comments from any member of council? Okay, this will remain in the forefront. What's next, Treasurer? Oh, thank you. Would be 303 to the residential unit, um, 455 98 to the uh, medium high commer medium commercial, uh, 60804 to the high, high commercial, uh, 243 24 to the medium multi residential, and metered could see an increase of 70 cents overall. This slide uh, 
goes to show what each area would ha would be impacted by. So the municipal tax is the first one. And I just want to note that this is based on $198,000 assessment, which is the median Cobden assessment. I found I was able to get track down that amount. So the this is only municipal tax. I should also note that education and county is not included in here. So this is just what we bill as a municipality. So we were at 1405 for municipal tax, go to 1439, an increase of $34. So a monthly change of 283. If you're in the areas of Beechburg or uh, Haley's, you go from 2486, 41 to 26, 12, 33, a change of 125, 92 for the entire year or monthly 1049. In the area of Cobden that has the wastewater, it goes from 417609 to 451406, a change of 337.97, and a monthly change of 2816. Any questions? Any questions from any member of council? <coughs> Councilor Moore. Just curious on that one slide there. Um, uh, municipal tax and water, um, Haley, Haley Town Site and Village of Beechburg going up the same amount. How does that affect, effect or affect um, the upcoming um, changes at Beechburg Water Plant? Will that be all taken out of reserves or where will that come from? So the all the upgrades at Beechburg Water Plant have been budgeted in 2023. So we're receiving a substantial portion, two thirds of it from the government grants. And the other $550,000 is coming out of our reserve, uh, which was part of that 342 that was put into reserve in 2023 uh, with the remainder uh, actually already existing in reserve. Um, I believe there's about, to go back to uh, Councillor uh, Bell's question, I believe the, in the end of, the, of 2024, there would be, um, or 2023, there would be about $100,000 left that's not dedicated to, to a project. So then you would add in that hundred, and so you'd be sitting around three hundred thousand dollars worth of uh, reserve funds at that point in time. But to answer your question, that project has been funded uh, already in the prior year. Yeah, and I can remember previous conversations too about having a reserve for breakdowns and um, pumps blown apart, et cetera. So we didn't have any before, so it's nice to have that reserve. Thank you. Yeah, to the just an, as another point that the, the 300,000 I speak to it, that it still itself does not still fund the replacement of that filter in the Cobden facility, which is costed to replace at 550. It's still a shortfall of $250,000. So there's still, it's working towards being able to just replace that within the overall years instead of one giant impact in one year, but it's, it's not quite there yet. Thank you for that. Is there any other questions from members of council? Good. And that the that is the end of your presentation? Uh, yeah, so I would just be looking for council direction. I forgot the slide on that one, but council direction to move to the public meeting with the uh, proposed rates uh, as, per, as presented. Okay. Specific to water and wastewater. Specific to water Good. and wastewater. Is there any recommendations from any member of council as to what you saw in this section that you'd like to see amended before it goes to the public meeting. No? Good. Just, we've done it twice now. Maybe uh, if we can include a slide on the advocacy efforts. No, duly noted. We'll put that in there. Mm -hmm. um, just so that we can at least demonstrate what we're trying to do about this very large nightmare. Okay, good. Anything else from anyone else? Councillor Moore? Just for anyone who's listening, um, them advocacy letters um, are uh, public domain, so they can get a copy if they request at the office. Absolutely, and they're available online as well. Good. So I see no amendments required. Okay. All right. Oh, sorry, Councillor Bell. Not so much on the amendments, but... Um, we had that presentation from the uh, from the group from Cobden about the wastewater and uh, and water rates. We're sending letters advocating on behalf of council and the township. But has there been any effort to um, to council with that group 
uh, to try to put together a letter that they can send in on their own behalf on an individual effort. Sometimes whenever, you know, you see, receive one letter from township, it's just one letter, but if you receive 400 letters, all signed by individuals within the community, is that something that we could try to put together for that group or see if there's interest from that group that we can send to those same, the same people that we're trying to advocate uh, on their behalf too? It's a great suggestion. And uh, what I'll note, two things. Uh, we have a notice of motion for the next council meeting. So next Wednesday, there's a notice of motion that I'm putting forward about a task force. I'll add that in there so we can debate it under that agenda item. If that's okay from the clerk's perspective here, good. Okay, so we'll add that in. And I can assure you from the number of times I've spoken with Mr. Yakubuski and Mrs. Gallant, they are already calling them. Um, it will be nice to be able to provide them some written direction, but it is quite clear to both of them that our residents are looking for help. Uh, and, and they've called me, I think I've been speaking to them two or three times in the last two or three weeks, and it's been about this issue. What can, what can we do? What's being done? Where are we at? So, but we'll be able to feed that, provided almost a draft letter or what they could, how, how best to voice their concern to the other levels of government. I think that's an appropriate approach. Is there any comments, any, any problem with the way forward if we use it as a agenda item on the next uh, regular council meeting? Excellent. Thank you. And Councillor Tabbert? No? She's good. Oh, yes. Regular council meeting is next Wednesday, Councillor Tabbert. Is that right? No. Two Wednesdays, December 6th. Okay, I've got council, county council mixed up. That's my fault. So December 6th, you're correct. Thank you, Councillor Tabbert, for correcting that. Good. Okay, Treasurer, back to you. Thank you. Uh, so this is just a, kind of a com con conclusion to the whole thing. Uh, just the budget schedule. So we've gone through the 4th, the 1st, and the 22nd. Uh, so the next uh, meeting will be the December 6th, which we'll do as the bu budget public meeting and the building fees public meeting, which have both been advertised. Uh, it'll be the final budgets presented and the feedback from public, uh, which I've already uh, noted in the ad, which should shortly be out in papers and has been posted online. Uh, if anybody has any comments or uh, concerns uh, that they want to direct in writing, they can direct them to myself. Um, and then uh, if anybody wants to attend that meeting uh, on, the, on the 6th, uh, to, uh, if they have any comments, they can do it at that point in time too. And then on December 20th is whenever the budget bylaw will be uh, slated to be passed, and that'll be uh, a special meeting at that point in time as well. Good, and that concludes? Thank you. Thank you. Good, so just to remind you, the recommendation that was before us was that the Council of Township White Water Region receive the draft 2024 budget presentation and direct staff to move forward with the public meeting on December 6th. Uh, it was moved by Councillor Trim and our Deputy Mayor. Good, is there any final questions or comments with respect to anything that was provided tonight from staff? Deputy Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just want to, um, I just want to say thank you uh, to Treasurer McGon McGonigal. I appreciate all the effort, all the work that has been put in here. Um, it's it's been very uh, it's been very productive and and very uh, well done for your first attempt. You've done a great job, so I just want to commend you and say thank you for that. Thank you very much. Good, and with that. I will call the vote. All those in favor? And it's carried. Good. Uh, and I'll just, before we adjourn, I'll just echo Deputy Mayor's comments. Thank you, staff. Um, the road to get here, I know, has been, and to specially put pressures of both the operating budget and the waste and wastewater and water. Uh, we appreciate the efforts you've been making and finding savings by forcing those discussions. We appreciate that. So thank you so much. Good, and we will adjourn at 7.20 p.m. Thank you.